So, I'm not really a question of the day type person, but I was kind of curious just to know what other games you guys like to play. Personally, I'm very much a PC gamer. I really love Team Fortress 2. I actually played a lot of it at a LAN party last night. So yeah, if I ever got into game commentary on a different game, it would probably be TF2, just by my estimate. So I got another OU match here. It's a rain team. This team actually turned out to be terrible, so I just scrapped it pretty soon. He leads off with Celebi against my Politoed, and I just wanted to get up rain, which is why I led with that, even though he does have a Celebi. And I'm gonna go into Scizor now. He actually gets up a nasty plot, so I guess it wasn't really a mystery as far as his moveset goes. And I'm just gonna go for a Bug Bite right away. Wasn't quite sure about my ability to survive a plus two HP fire in the rain, but I didn't really have anything else to deal with Celebi at this point. So he's gonna go into his Gyarados, and it turns out that he didn't have Intimidate, and I'm not really sure what it is, because it doesn't have leftovers, so it's obviously not bulky DD. So I assume that it's probably gonna be some kind of offensive variant. It wasn't Life Orb either, so I guess it has to be choiced somehow. So I'm just gonna go for a Will-O-Wisp on the Switch, predicting him to go out to his Swampert. And Swampert doesn't have recovery, which is one of its main shortcomings, especially compared to choices like Quagsire or even Gastrodon. So that's one of the main reasons why it can't really compete as much. So I'm going to get off that burn, and that's really going to make Swampert a lot easier to deal with, because it really puts a damper on his ability to survive. And I'm going to stay in with my Ferrothorn. Seems like kind of a dumb move because I go for a Thunder Wave, but if you think about it, he's going to get up a Nasty Plot in this situation anyway. So if I Thunder Wave him, I can at least ensure that next turn I will outspeed him with Scizor if I decide to switch it in. And I'll just be able to use Bug Bite and threaten a one-hit KO, so he'll be forced to switch out, and when he comes back in, he'll be weakened considerably because of all the entry hazards I set up. So I just get up a layer of spikes and also Stealth Rock. Turns out that he doesn't have HP Fire, which is pretty good. Not really sure how it compares to Earth Power in the Rain, but he does have Life Orb, and you can see that Ferrothorn is pretty much a beast, both physically and specially defensive speaking. Because I managed to survive that Earth Power despite the fact that he has Life Orb and it's at plus two from Nasty Plots. So I do get up another layer of spikes. Overall, I've got Stealth Rock and two layers of spikes up now, which is really good because he has absolutely no entry hazards up. So I'm pretty much going to be dominating the switching game. And I'm just going to set up a sub on Thunderous. I actually do not like the Nasty Plot Life Orb standard set as much. I prefer this one because sub really helps me scout for status, and even outspeed most priority users to scout for movesets because I have Prankster. And I was hoping for some para hacks because I can set up a multitude of subs because he has a 25% chance to be fully paralyzed, and I can definitely set up more than four times. He actually gets a double paralysis though, so that was pretty bad for him. The chance of a double paralysis happening is actually only 6.25%, so you can see that was kind of haxy overall. So he's going to go into his Swampert, and I am at plus 2, so I should be able to KO it with Hidden Power Ice. Overall, Quagsire is a much better switch in into Thunderous because of Unaware, so of course that nullifies my stat boosts. And of course, Swampert's not really going to be able to do much. Hidden Power Ice will still do a lot, even though it's neutral and not really that strong. So I'm going to be able to 2-hit KO Swampert pretty easily. Even if he didn't uh, have a burn, I would have been able to KO him anyway. And I'd suspect that Ice Punch probably wouldn't have done that much damage even if I didn't have a sub up because he's burned. So even though it is super effective, of course. So now he's going to send out his Gyarados again. And I was kind of wondering why he decided to send out Gyarados. And I was sort of surprised when he outsped me. Because it turned out that although I thought it was probably choiced, I really expected Band instead of Scarf. Because Scarf Gyarados is sort of gimmicky, not really that good of a set at all. Although it does manage to catch me by surprise and does a lot. I actually do manage to hold on and survive, so Thunderous manages to get off uh, Thunder and KO his Gyarados. So Thunderous managed to tear a decent chunk out of his team, but it's pr probably time for it to die now because he sends out his Scizor. And I'm just going to leave it into a Bullet Punch because really no point in uh, leaving it in. It doesn't really have that much health anyway, so I can't really do much. So, it seems that he's locked into it with a Choice Ban because he doesn't have Leftovers, so it's not a specially defensive set. And I actually thought he would switch out, which is why I decided to set up a sub with Azumarill. A lot of people like to use Choice Ban, but I kind of like this set because uh, it's a little bit more flexible, and I can set up some subs, which makes it easier to deal with status. So he's going to just stay in and use Bullet Punch. And that's going to put me in a kind of an awkward position because I don't have Waterfall, unfortunately. I use the other two movesets for coverage purposes, so I've got Focus Punch and Ice Punch for stuff like Ferrothorn and Grass types. So I'm just going to be forced to go with Aqua Jet to finish him off. It's a two-hit KO, but he does actually outspeed me, so he's going to get off another Bullet Punch and do a considerable amount to Azumarill. So now he's going to switch into his Machamp, and I'm kind of glad that it didn't uh, hit any of my other Pokemon. 
because Azumarill's already kind of weakened a lot, so I can kind of just sack it and get off an Aqua Jet, and that's going to put it in KO range for one of my other Pokemon, which is pretty good. So he's going to go for that Dynamic Punch, doesn't really matter, Confusion's not too important because he is going to kill me off anyway. So I'm going to send in Rotom now just to finish off the rest of his team, and I'm just going to go for a Thunder because I don't want to miss a Hydro Pump, and Thunder is very powerful in the rain, 100% accuracy and 180 base power after Stab Factored in. So he's going to send out his last Pokemon, which is Heatran, and really not much that can do to me, of course, especially since it's raining. He's got an Air Balloon, but it doesn't matter because I don't use Ground-type moves anyway. So he actually gets a Fire Blast, unfortunately misses, but it doesn't really matter anyway, because I definitely would have survived even if it wasn't raining. And that is game right about now. Okay, I got kind of a filler upload here today. Basically, my friend Jackie here challenged me to a 4th gen OU match a couple days ago, and I pretty much just wanted to get this uploaded before I forget about it, and then after that I'm pretty much going to go pure 5th gen, I think. Alright, so I'm going to lead off with Uxie, and he's going to go with Frostlass. No point really in setting up Stealth Rock because he has Taunt, so I'm just going to predict that and go for the U-turn. Probably break his Sash as well, so that's pretty good. And I'm going to switch to Jirachi. I'm actually not running a Scarf Jirachi, but I thought he might switch out in fear of it. But he takes the risk and stays in for a layer of Spikes. And I'm just going to Iron Head him. I actually get a crit here, which probably mattered, but you know, Serene Grace, so it's not really that unlikely to happen. And he does get off a layer of spikes though, which is not too bad, but it is going to put a limit on some of my switching. So he's going to go into a Heatran now, and I don't really have anything to do against that. So I'm going to switch out to Gyarados, and he actually double switches to Flygon. I'm not really sure why exactly, but this isn't really a bad matchup for me. Although he probably has Thunder Punch at minus one because of the Intimidate drop, it's probably not going to do too much. So I just decided to stay in and risk it for a Waterfall, just to scout what his Gyarados counter is. And it actually turns out to be a Dusknar, I think. So that's not really that solid of a Gyarados counter, but I guess it's probably the best thing he has. So I'm going to keep that in mind for later. I'm probably going to be able to get rid of Dusknar pretty easily, and then I'll be able to pave the way for a Gyarados sweep. So I'm going to go into Uxie now, just in case he has Will-O-Wisp. I wanted to scout for his attack. And he goes for a Thunder Punch, which hardly does anything, of course, because Uxie is really bulky. And I actually have not gotten up rocks yet, so I just decided to do that now and scout his move. He actually does reveal Will-O-Wisp at this point. Doesn't really matter because Uxie doesn't really care about burn anyway. Plus I have a Lumberry, which I usually use for sleep leads like Smeargle and Roserade. So I'm just going to Psychic. Not really for the damage, but just to weaken him a little bit. Because it doesn't really do that much damage either since Duskmar is also really bulky. He goes for another Thunder Punch. So at this point, there's really no point in me staying in because Psychic's not doing enough. And the main point of me going for Psychic was pretty much just to weaken it into Fire Blast range for Heatran. So I U-turn out, and I didn't want to switch Heatran into an Earthquake, but instead he goes for a Will-O-Wisp instead. So that's pretty good for me, because I really can't take an Earthquake, even though I do have Shuka, I really wouldn't want to take that quad effective attack. So he's going to switch out to his Dragonite on the Fire Blast, and this is going to be kind of unlucky for him, because he actually gets the Burn Hacks here, and... That's probably one of the more unfortunate things to happen during this match. I'm not sure if he's running Roost or whatever set it is. It doesn't have leftovers, so I assume it might be a mixed knight. So I'm just going to fodder Yuxi. And I actually switch into an Earthquake, so I guess he didn't bother predicting. And I'm just going to finish him off with a Psychic. It was kind of a waste of a Dragonite for him, so it was a little unfortunate with that Burn Hacks. And he's going to go back into Dusknar at this point. And since I'm revealed Heatran... I don't really want him to predict the switch and go for an Earthquake, but I'm pretty sure that he probably won't predict that much, so I'm just going to U-turn out and go into Heatran anyway. And he actually is going to go for the Pain Split, which is Dusknar's primary form of recovery. And I'm pretty sure that he doesn't actually have Earthquake, but I'm pretty careful around playing against D Dusknar, because Earthquake tends to do a lot but just because of the quad effective damage. And I'm going to go for an Earth Power just in case he switched to his own Heatran. If not, it'll at least do a pretty good amount of damage to Duskmar and weaken a little bit. So he goes for a Thunder Punch, doesn't do much, I miss a Fire Blast. He pretty much has nothing except Thunder Punch to KO me. And that's actually doing kind of a lot to me just because of all the Fire Blast misses and stuff like that. But um, I'm actually going to go for a Fire Blast again. And this time he actually predicts correctly and switches in his own Heatran. I'm not really sure if he's running Shuka, but since I'm at lower health and I probably can't survive his Earth Power anyway, I'm just going to switch to Gera and see what he sets up. 
and he actually goes for the Stealth Rock, which um, probably isn't too good for me because that's going to limit Gyarados from switching in. But he's going to go into his Flygon at this point, and I'm just going to get up a Dragon Dance. I thought he might go into Dusk Dusknoir, so I wanted to be able to KO it at plus one. But just to scout for a Thunder Punch, I decided to go into Jirachi. I needed something that could take both U-Turn and Thunder Punch, and at this point in the match, Jirachi was pretty much the only viable choice. So I just decided to send it in here. And I'm actually running a Parahax Jirachi. The entire team is Parahax themed, because it's pretty much the only 4th gen team I have left over. So he's going to go for another Thunder Punch and get the Parahax on me, actually. Pretty ironic. But um, I'm using Body Slam, which lets me paralyze gra ground types. So that's pretty useful, and I also get the 60% Parahax on him. Of course, his was only 10%, but it kind of even things uh, evens things up a little after what happened earlier. So he's going to go back into Dust Noir now, and I'm just going to Wish, because that's pretty much a good way to provide recovery for my team and prevent me from dying quicker. So he's going to go into Dusknoir now, not really sure why because obviously he can't burn me since I'm already paralyzed, but since I've already wished, I'm just going to go into Heatran and see what he does. And he actually is going to go for the Thunder Punch. I kind of misjudged about the entry hazards because I sort of forgot that he had both Stealth Rock and Spikes up, so I basically wasted my wish for nothing since even though it's Thunder Punch and that's really weak, with entry hazards it's going to be a pretty easy KO on Heatran. So I'm going to go into Celebi at this point, another Parahack Spreader, and he's going to switch into his Flygon. And at this point, I just went for a Thunder Wave, but I guess he managed to predict that and go for his Flygon. Would have been a good switch anyway, because it's Ground-type. But I'm just going to finish him off with a Leaf Storm. This is a pretty offensive Celebi anyway. It's the Smoke and Tinkerbell set. So I'm running Life Orb and uh, quite a few special attack EVs as well. So that's going to do a lot of damage. And he's going to go into his Heatran now, and I don't really have anything I can do against that. So I'm switching back to Uxie. I don't know if he has Hidden Power Electric or Explosion, and he's playing to use that on the Switch to hit Gyarados. So I pretty much just wanted to sack Uxie and see what he does. He actually does go for a Dragon Pulse Predict, and that's not too bad because it wouldn't do that much damage to Gyarados, but I'm still pretty glad that I managed to switch in Uxie instead. Because I don't really mind if I need to sack Uxie, it doesn't really do that much anyway. So I outspeed him and get the Parahax on his Heatran, which is pretty useful. And I'm going to go into Machamp now, and pretty much just threaten him out with a Dynamic Punch. So I'm going to sub up in case he switches out, but instead he doesn't. So either he's predicting for me to use sub, or he's just planning to sacrifice his Heatran. But either way, I'm going to go for one more sub after this, just to see if I can manage to manipulate the Parahax in my favor. So playing with Parahax is really all about math. Uh, you have to deal with probability and stuff. I mean, Pokemon in general is like that, but probably more so when you're playing with Parahax. So he's going to go with the Flamethrower, and he didn't um, get the Parahax on either turn. So I don't really want to waste any more subs, because I'm just going to be draining my own HP. So I'm going to finish him off with Dynamic Punch now, and of course that's going to KO, because, you know, it's 100 fighting base stab. So I do get rid of his Heatran, which is going to make things easier for some of my other team members. I'm a little upset that I didn't manage to get a sub up with Machamp, but it's not too bad because I did manage to get rid of his most of his Pokemon already anyway. So he's going to go into a Lucario now, and good thing I managed to save Gyarados till now, because although I do have to switch into Stealth Rock, it's probably my best Lucario counter on this team. So, I do get the Intimidate drop, which is the important thing, and he's going to go for a close combat. Not very effective, so it really doesn't do too much damage, even after Stealth Rock. And he gets the double defense and special defense drop, which is important, because that means I'll be able to KO him with Waterfall next turn. He's only got two Pokemon left, Lucario and Dusk Noir, so my best bet right now is actually just to spam Waterfalls. I could Dragon Dance if I wanted to, but that actually runs the risk of overpredicting because... He could possibly stay in and hit me, possibly crit me even. So the best thing to do is just to spam waterfalls at this point, and that'll probably be my best option. So I'm going to go for a second waterfall on his Dustmar. It's pretty weak at this point, so I'm going to be able to KO that pretty easily. And now that he's back into Lucario, I'm probably going to take care of it pretty easily. And I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to KO in one turn. So initially I was thinking about switching out and switching back into Gyarados because of Intimidate. But I decided not to because of Stealth Rock being up. And he goes for an Ice Punch. It's a good first move because although Close Combat is actually his strongest move, if he uses it first turn, then he'll get the Defense Drop and I'll KO him for sure. 
So he makes a good move by going for Ice Punch first, and now he's going to go for Close Combat because it's his most powerful move, and there's really not much left he can do. Life Orb Recoil is going to wear him down anyway, so I'm going to be able to KO him with Waterfall. Barely survived that, so yeah, that's going to wrap up the game, I believe, 4-0 for me. So yeah, be sure to check out his channel if you have time. He's a pretty good battler, so yeah.